Good morning. We welcome you once again to our Golden Lampstand online service. Uh, today, we especially like to uh, welcome all the mothers and wish them a blessed Mother's Day. Uh, we remember the mothers today. And once again, we thank all of you for joining us. Uh, we believe the Lord will speak to each one of us and we will all have a blessed time together. Let us pray. Father, we thank you for this day. We want to pray that this day, especially, you let rest your hand upon all the mothers and bless the mothers. And even as we meditate upon your word, we want to pray that you speak to the mothers. We want to pray that the mothers themselves will feel so blessed today uh, because you are the one who have, has made them mothers and we know that you uh, are the one who blesses them all the time. In the Lord Jesus' name we pray. Amen. <laughs> Exodus 2, 1 to 10. 
Now a man of the house of Levi married a Levite woman, and she became pregnant and gave birth to a son. When she saw that he was a fine child, she hid him for three months. But when she could hide him no longer, she got a papyrus basket for him and coated it with tar and pitch. Then she placed the child in it and put it among the reeds along the bank of the Nile. His sister stood at a distance to see what would happen to him. Then Pharaoh's daughter went down to the Nile to bathe, and her attendants were walking along the river bank. She saw the basket among the reeds and sent her slave girl to get it. She opened it and saw the baby. He was crying and she felt sorry for him. This one of the Hebrew babies, she said. Then his sister asked Pharaoh's daughter, Shall I go and get one of the Hebrew women to nurse the baby for you? Yes, go, she answered. And the girl went and got the baby's mother. Pharaoh's daughter said to her, Take this baby and nurse him for me, and I will pay you. So the woman took the baby and nursed him. When the child grew older, she took him to Pharaoh's daughter, and he became her son. She named him Moses saying, I drew him out of the water. Let us pray. Father, we thank you that today we celebrate Mother's Day. We thank you that we can come before you and we can open scripture in your presence. We want to pray and invite the Spirit of God to be present with us, the Holy Spirit to come upon us, to speak to us, to minister, especially to the mothers today, even as we meditate upon your word. And we pray that all who hear your word today will be blessed. In the Lord Jesus' name we pray. Amen. Today we want to look at the story of Moses, uh, the beginning of Moses. And uh, we want to look at the context behind what was going on. And uh, Joseph, uh, who brought the whole of the Israelites back to uh, into Egypt had passed away and all his brothers and the generation had passed away and now there was a new king that had come into power who was now the Pharaoh the king of Egypt and he didn't know anything about the story of Joseph and as he saw the Israelites grow in number there was this fear upon him that the Israelites would would uh, join the other nations when the nations attack them and uh, and uh, help other nations defeat them um, and at the same time, the Lord was blessing the Israelites. They were fruitful and, and they began to increase in number. So this is the background that, that we have in uh, this narrative. And we also want to remember that because of his fear, uh, Pharaoh decided that, that all the children, all the males of the Israelites need to be put to death. And, and he started off by asking the midwives to put them to death. And uh, the midwives who feared the Lord and uh, did not put them to death. Um, um, so what happened was uh, Pharaoh released a law. He released a, uh, an edict that all the male uh, babies, all the babies that were born who were males, were to be thrown into the River Nile. And that is the context that we're looking at. And today I want to share with you uh, about the unnamed woman. We want to look at the mother of Moses and we want to see how God used her. And we want to look at uh, several things. We want to look at five things uh, from uh, the mother of Point Moses. And, uh, she was a Levite woman. Exodus 2.1 Now a man of the house of Levi married a Levite woman. The first thing I'd like to share with you is that um, this unnamed woman, this mother of Moses, was a Levite woman. Now, that's the first thing I want to share with you. The Bible says that a man from the house of Levi had married a Levite woman. So the father of Moses was a Levite and so was his mother. So they were Levites. Today, the reference to the tribe of Israel, uh, Levi uh, is a tribe that has been accredited to the priesthood. The Levites are priests today, but they did not exist during the time of when Moses was a baby. And uh, what I would like to uh, suggest is that um, Moses' mother raised up a family of priests. Whether she was aware of it or not, that is not the question, but she raised up 
a family of priests and two of her sons uh, one set up the priesthood and the other uh, became the first priest or rather the first high priest and that's what I, I want to share with you today uh, the church in the church we are all priests the word of God says we are a royal priesthood. Let me read uh, 1 Peter 2, 5 to you. You also, like living stones, are being built into a spiritual house to be a holy priesthood. We also are being built into this house to be a holy priesthood. And I want to um, uh, take this verse and I, I, I want to uh, place it before the mothers and, and share to the mothers that God has picked you, God has chosen you, that you may may raise within your families within your house a royal priesthood and and the first thing that I would like to share with the mothers is that take it as a call upon your life that God has given you this call that your home that you can build a home of a royal priesthood that that God will use his your children uh, to be the priest of tomorrow. I am not talking about full-time ministry. I am not talking about the pastoral ministry. But I am speaking more of a royal priesthood. We are all priests of the Lord Jesus Christ. We are all priests of God. So the first thing that I would like to share with mothers is the first thing that you need to do is take it upon yourself that the call that God has given you as a mother is a call to raise a royal priesthood. To raise children who are faithful to God, children who love the Lord, children who would stand in the gap for God, children who would reach out to the world for God. So the first thing that I would like to share with you is that uh, be a Levite woman. Be a Levite woman raising children that are a royal priesthood. That's the first thing I want to share with you. Point two, she hid her child. Exodus 2.2 and she became pregnant and gave birth to a son. When she saw that he was a fine child, she hid him for three months. The second thing I want to share with you is that she hid her child. The word of God says that when she saw that he was a fine child, she hid him. When she saw he was a fine child. Now the Hebrew word used here is, is the word uh, that means good or he was pleasing or he was a, a pleasant child. So um, when she saw that this child this baby was was good was pleasant then she hid him so the the question i need to ask was how different was moses from all the other male boys that were thrown into the nile how was he different from all the other male babies that were born she saw that he was good he was fine uh, child he was a pleasing child so the f the first thing i want to share is that every child is good every child is, is fine and pleasing now as as mothers the the first thing we uh, uh, we need to uh, remember and all the time note is that every child is good God has given us children that are pleasant and we must always be careful and we must let our our children know that we see that they are good that they are pleasant that that uh, that they are uh, have been given that goodness in them when the, at the, at their birth at when they were born uh, and and then the, the word of god says that in Exodus 1.22, Then Pharaoh gave this order to all people, Every boy that is born, you must throw into the Nile, but let every girl live. This is the word of Pharaoh. Uh, Pharaoh, uh, when he says something, it becomes law. It, it, it's a law now of Egypt that uh, during that time, that every baby boy uh, that is born needs to be thrown into the Nile. It's, it's a law. So every child, male child that is born, is born with a death sentence. Every male child is born as one who has committed a crime of being born. So uh, I would go on to say that uh, this child, when he was born, had a death sentence upon him. And the mother protected the child from the death sentence. 
the mother protected so she hid him she protected him from the death sentence so as parents as mothers we need to protect our children from in a way the death sentence that has been put upon them by the world we need to protect our children from all the the bad things that comes to them from the world all the bad statements all the bad judgments that has come to do, that will come to them from the world so she hid him from all these things she hid him and she protected him from the death sentence that comes upon him um, I, further I would like to uh, tell you we all know that uh, we all are familiar with with Jeremiah 29 11 uh, for God says that uh, for I know the plans I have for you declares the Lord plans to prosper you and not to harm you plans to give you hope and a future we are familiar with that uh, and every child that God has given us has God God has plans for every child a plan that will prosper the child a plan that will give the child a hope and a future not to harm the child so Moses mother when she saw this child when she saw that he was a good child I believe that she she believed that God could do something good in this child every child has got a plan every child has got a future every child has got a hope that God has put in this child. She could have never known that one day her son would lead all the Israelites out of Egypt and take them almost into the promised land. She could have never known that her son was the one who would save the whole Israelite race. She could have never known that her son would be the person who God will use to set up the Levitical priesthood. She could have never realized that her son would be the person whom God would give the Ten Commandments to and uh, teach the people the law of God. But God did all these things in the life of this baby. But all she knew was when she looked at this child as, is, is that this child was a good child, that she this, this child was... Uh, uh, a child who, who was pleasant, who was pleasing, uh, this child who was a fine child. And, and he, as she looked at a child being a fine child, she knew that she had to hide him. And this was her act of faith. And many times as parents, as mothers, you need to take that act, step of faith to believe in your children, to know that your children are good, to know uh, to protect your children from all the evil influences that are coming to the child from the world to know that God has a plan for your children and God will someday fulfill his plan in their lives point three she built a basket for her child Exodus 2 3 but when she could hide him no longer she got a papyrus basket for him and coated it with tar and pitch then she placed the child in it and put it among the reeds along the bank of the Nile. The third thing I want to share with you is that she built a basket for the child. She built a basket, a papyrus basket for this child. She coated it with, with tar and pitched and she put it in the river. And put it in the river uh, among the reeds in the Nile. Uh, let me read that to you again. She got a papyrus basket for him, coated it with tar and pitch. Then she placed the child in it and put it among the reeds along the bank of the Nile. Now, the word used for papyrus basket or basket here is the word teba. The word teba. Teba can mean a basket. A teba can also be a box. Teba can also be an ark. When God spoke to Noah, in Genesis chapter 6 and said I want you to build an ark the word used is a teba teba the same word used so uh, Moses mother built an ark and she put the child in an ark and she put that ark in the Nile now I want you to capture what's happening here the other baby boys were thrown into the Nile but Moses was placed in the same Nile, but he was in the ark. He was in 
an ark. And because he was in the ark, he moved from death to life. He moved from danger to safety. He moved from common to royalty. He moved from uh, slave to being in the kingdom. He moved from a nobody to somebody. He moved from a no name. There's no name mentioned about Moses before. To a child with name, Moses, drawn out of the water. So what I want to share with you is this is a form of baptism that gave Moses life. Just as in the time of Noah, the ark going through the flood was seen as a baptism, I would like to suggest that this is a form of baptism that Moses went through, that he moved from death to life. The children, the boys, baby boys who were not in the ark, fell into the Nile and died. But Moses was saved because he was in this ark. Now, the third thing I want to propose to mothers is that you need to bring this message. It, it, it's like a baptism. You need to bring the gospel into your families. You need to teach your children about God. You need to teach your children about moving from death to life. I'm not speaking about the physical baptism, which you could also speak about that. But what I'm speaking about is you must bring eternal life into the lives of your children. Raising them up includes bringing eternal life into their lives. And we need to bring our children to the place where they are transferred from danger to safety, death to life, common to royalty, to be children of the kingdom, nobody to be somebody, having no name, into a person who carries the name of the Lord Jesus Christ. So the, the, the third thing I want to share is you need to be a woman of faith, bringing this faith into the life of the children. I also want to say this, that when uh, Moses' mother put this child in the basket, it was a prophetic act. Do a prophetic act in the lives of your children. To let them know that they are special. Do a prophetic act to let them know that they belong to the kingdom. Point four. She nursed her child. Exodus 2, 7 to 9. Then his sister asked Pharaoh's daughter, Shall I go and get one of the Hebrew women to nurse the baby for you? Yes, go, she answered. And the girl went and got the baby's mother. Pharaoh's daughter said to her, Take this baby and nurse him for me, and I will pay you. So the woman took the baby and nursed him. The fourth thing I want to share with you is that the word of God says that she nursed the child. She nursed the child. She, she brought the child up. Now, it's, uh, this child was found by, by Pharaoh's daughter, and uh, she sent her uh, maids to go and collect the child. And now the child has been handed back to Moses' mother so that she can nurse the child. Uh, the word here basically uh, means to, to, to feed the child with milk and to, uh, uh, but generally to raise the child up. Now, um, if we see the whole narrative, it begins with Moses' mother leaving the basket in the Nile and Moses' sister standing and watching the basket. It goes on to Pharaoh's daughter seeing the basket and getting her maids to go and collect the basket. Now, uh, the, the whole uh, episode, the whole narrative is speaking about, about women, the, uh, uh, women who lays the, the child in the, 
the Nile and uh, another woman, a, a child, uh, who watches the child and then who later uh, we see Pharaoh's daughter seeing the child and then th there's also uh, the, the Pharaoh's daughter asking the, the maids. So the question I need to ask at this point is where are the men? Where are the men? In fact, if you if you read this chapter on the introduction of, of Moses' life, the early part of Moses' life, except for the mention of, of Moses' father, who was a, a, a man of the house of Levi, we don't see any other men come into this, this short narrative. But it's a narrative mainly of a baby and, and the women. So uh, what I want to start off by saying is that there are some things that God uses only women to do. To nurse the child, to raise the child. And, and in this picture you see God using only women. So I want to say to all the mothers that are there some things that God has given you that nobody can have. You are special in that sense. And God has picked you to do things that nobody else can do. Only you, only Moses' mother, even though she, had, she was not able to, to be, uh, uh, she was not able to, to openly be the mother of Moses and, and to nurse him and to take care of him. But, but God used the miracle situations uh, miraculously uh, he used the situation to bring the child back to his own mother and in God's eyes only his mother could be the mother of Moses and um, I, I like to say uh, this to the mothers God has only picked you so what you need to do is do the job that God has picked you to do. Raise your children, nurse your children in every way possible and raise them up because that's God has only picked you. Now, as, as women, as mothers, the other thing I would like to say is don't try to do things that God has not called you to do. This is what God has called you to do. And sometimes you get in involved and, and um, we get caught up by so many other things that we miss the primary task that God has given to us and uh, if we miss it then one day we will wake up and realize that it's too late the opportunity is gone and I also want to mention here in this point that even when God asks uh, Moses mother to nurse this child through Pharaoh's daughter. Pharaoh's daughter says that I want you to nurse this child and I will pay you. Let me read that. Uh, Take this baby and nurse him for me and I will pay you. And I want to I want to encourage mothers that everything you need for nursing and raising your children will be provided for so you need to trust God and just do what God has required to you to do raise your children nurse your children and bring them up in the love and the fear of the Lord point five she surrendered her child Exodus 2 10 when the child grew older she took him to Pharaoh's daughter and he became her son. She named him Moses saying, I drew him out of the water. And finally, my, my fifth uh, point is she surrendered her child. She took her child to Pharaoh's daughter and he became her son. Uh, the word of God says when he grew older. We don't know exactly how much older, but there came a time when uh, Moses' mother knew that she could keep him no longer, so she surrendered uh, her child to Pharaoh's daughter. Now I want to start off by making this remark. The word son 
he became her son, Pharaoh's daughter's son, in Hebrew is the word Bain. Bain means basically to build a family, to build a family. Um, uh, a son as a builder of the family name. And it comes from a root word, Banao, uh, which means to build or to begin to build. So uh, Moses' mother handed over her child to Pharaoh's daughter so that he would now become her son or her, uh, uh, a bane to her, a builder of a new family. Now, um, uh, it come, there will always be a time where the mother needs to let go and release her children, surrender her children, so that the child can become a builder or the child can allow God to do what God needs to do in the child's life. Um, sometimes this would also mean to surrender a son, more a son than a daughter, to the other woman and so that he could build a family with her. Um, but in a, a wider sense of the word, uh, we need to let our children go so that God could do and fulfill uh, God's desire in their lives. Now, when she had surrendered that son to Pharaoh's daughter, she gave him the name Moses, or in Hebrew, Mose. And Mose uh, would mean to draw out, uh, meaning, she said, because I drew him out of the water, to draw somebody out. and. Um, and, and that was the child's identity. So when we surrender our child, what happens is God uses circumstances and people to mold our identity to who we are. Uh, if we read scripture, we find that there's no name given to Moses before Pharaoh's daughter gave him the name. Draw out, draw out. And uh, we know that that was his identity. He drew the Israelites out of bondage out of slavery into freedom into the promised land and he drew them out of the red sea as they, they crossed the red sea uh, he drew them out of the water into a land of freedom they were free after they crossed the red sea um, so uh, what we can see is that was the identity given to moses now if we don't let go then we find that our children cannot find out find God's purpose in their lives, their identity that God has given them. So uh, my final uh, point would be uh, there will come a time when we need to let go. We need to know that we cannot hold on to them forever. We need to let them go. So today, uh, mothers, I would just like to remind you of the uh, several things I mentioned. She was a Levite woman. Um, you need to uh, be raise your children in that priesthood, the, the royal priesthood. Uh, you, you, you need to identify. Uh, she hid a child because uh, the child was a uh, good, was a fine child. You need to see the beauty in our children to protect them because God has a plan for them. Um, we need to to uh, bring them into the faith. I spoke about baptism, crossover uh, into the kingdom. And uh, finally, uh, we need to provide for our children uh, and God will provide. There will be supernatural providence and eventually we need to let go. And, and I uh, believe the Lord will minister to our mothers today. We want to pray for our mothers and we want to pray for God's blessing upon them that they shall be strengthened, that they will do exactly what God requires of them in their lives. Let us pray. Father, we thank you for our mothers. We thank you for your call in their lives. We thank you that there are things that they can do that you have 
uh, only uh, uh, had uh, prepared for them to do. We want to pray that you bless them today, that even as they uh, raise their children, they will raise their children uh, to be uh, of the royal priesthood, that they will see the beauty in their children, they will learn to protect their children, to identify your plan in their lives, to, to give them that prophetic baptism to bring them into the kingdom. Uh, Lord, we pray that they would provide for their children and ultimately they would surrender their children uh, first to you and uh, then to uh, your plan in their life. So we thank you, we praise you. Today, once again, we want to pray for your hand to rest upon all the mothers, all those who are listening uh, uh, to this uh, video. Lord, we want to pray that in the name of the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit, you would rest your hand upon these mothers and you would release a special anointing upon them today. We pray for them, grant them good health, provide, Lord, for all their needs, and Lord, we pray that you yourself will make them special. Uh, in the Lord Jesus' name, we pray. Amen. The benediction. May God himself, the God of peace, sanctify you through and through. May your whole spirit, soul and body be kept blameless at the coming of our Lord Jesus Christ. The Lord bless you and keep you. The Lord make his face shine upon you and be gracious unto you. The Lord lift his countenance upon you and give you peace. Amen. Once again, we'd like to thank all of you for joining us. We especially once again want to bless the mothers and say, uh, God grant you a blessed day. God grant you a blessed year. God continue to uh, pour out his rich, blessing, rich, rich blessings upon you. And uh, we just want to uh, thank God for you. Thank you for joining us. We pray that you join us once again next week. God bless you.